230 US for a Snapdragon 820, 4GB of RAM and a 2K screen. Now that sounds unbelievable. This here is the Li Max 2 from Li Echo, and they're offering such a spec at such a low price. But is it any good or not? Well, that's what I'm here to find out, so let's have a look in detail. So the front of the device has a 2K screen that is covered with Gorilla Glass 3 protection. It has an 8 megapixel camera status LED and we do have hardware menu buttons along the bottom. On the left side the dual SIM tray which takes two nano SIMs. Along the bottom the loudspeaker, microphone and the Type-C port. Now this Type-C port does have an occluded adapter in the box so we are able to connect our 3.5mm headphones. On the right side, the volume up and down buttons and the power button. And on the top, just the IR blaster, sadly no 3.5mm headphone jack, which is a real shame to see they remove that. And on the rear, the fingerprint reader, 21 megapixel camera and the dual tone LED flash and secondary microphone. Now the bolt in general does feel good in hand. And I have no real complaints about it, apart from the volume rocker does feel a little bit loose and you can hear it rattle if you shake the phone. With well, 470 nits of brightness, the screen is viewable in direct sunlight here as you can see, but ideally I would like to see it a little bit brighter. I can still make it out, I can still dial numbers, which is the main thing. So it is running EUI 5.8, now this is their own custom skin, their own custom launcher that is on top of Android 6. And you'll see it's an all-in-one, there is no app draw, so it's very similar in ways to the MIUI that Xiaomi use. Along here we have the recent apps, which also doubles as our toggles and screen brightness controls and everything can be found here. It's a different setup, there's no more slide down to pull down the toggles that you normally find on most ROMs. And it takes a little while to get used to. Other than that, there is some bloatware on there that comes pre-installed. There are a couple of live TV app programs there that I don't need or want. Scrolling to the, the left there, you'll see another leave you bloaty kind of application that just shows you some latest trailers and videos. Again, something that I don't think most people will want on there. Now there is a solution to fix that with a custom ROM from XDA, but that does involve having to flash and get uh, TWRP on there, and it's a bit of a process. But other than that, it's not bad. The performance of it is good, and you do get used to it. And keeping with my other videos, here are some benchmarks that I always like to show. So the wireless performance, speed-wise, is quite good. Very good speeds out of that. 4G speeds as well, and the 3G that I was connected to didn't have any problems there with those speeds. I was getting similar speeds on other mobile phones, testing in the same location. Here is the Antutu score. Of course, the Snapdragon 820 is very quick and gets a nice score there. Now, it's not the highest I have seen. Probably let down a little by the by the UI score they're being a little lower. Performance wise it is very good. Here's the 3D Mark Slingshot score 2024. iStorm Extreme maxed out. iStorm Unlimited almost 30,000 and the Geekbench 3 score. And here is our battery life. So the working battery life time was almost 7 hours. This is about a good hour less or so from the Samsung Galaxy S7. So battery life isn't quite up to spec as other ones, but only a little bit short. You can still normally get from light to medium usage, you're going to get about two days out of it. And it's very quick to charge as well. This thing can charge up to 50% in only 30 minutes. To fully charge takes about an hour and 25 minutes. Charging times are good. And the screen on time there that I managed to get was 5 hours and 46 minutes, if you can't read that. And and two two. Sorry, the Geekbench 4 score, which has just been recently released, for those that are interested, that's it right there. So GPS performance I have found to be really good. I have used Google Maps in town and Sync GPS, never lost lock. A quick look at the stock camera application here. We've got quite a few settings we can adjust and tweak in the photo mode. Filters, whatnot, exposure, sharpness. Now picture size goes all the way up to 21 megapixels 4x3. And when it comes to video mode, we have... Literally no settings here, only the video quality, which is adjusting the resolution from 4K all the way down to 720p there. Also have panorama, so we can take a uh, panoramic shots there. You move that up and down or left to right, and it will take the photos there. And slow-mo, which records in 
20p there and I didn't find the slow-mo quality to be very good at all. I probably wouldn't even use that to be honest. Now the shutter speed when you're taking photos isn't too bad and good lighting it is very quick. Here you'll see that it's pretty much instantaneous there but when it is in the low light conditions it can take a while to get that lock and focus and then take the photo so shutter lag and lower lighting isn't very good. So this is a 4K video sample here. Now I found that the quality, it does record a lot of detail, it's very sharp. But there's a couple of flaws with the 4K video. And first off you notice that it's a little bit shaky. And the other thing is autofocus. So autofocus is not continual in video mode. Even though it does have phase detection autofocus with this sensor, you need to constantly tap the screen to get a focus lock, which is quite awkward. And another problem I have noticed that you get a lot of artifacts from possibly too much post-processing, compression, with the blue skies. For here example, you can see the blue sky, and you see a lot of those artifacts there, which isn't good to see. So let's have a look now at some photo samples. And here is a front facing video sample. So the 8 megapixel camera can only record in 720p. Alright, I have switched over to a different microphone here just to listen to the loudspeaker on the bottom. It's only got one loudspeaker. So that actually doesn't sound too bad. It's not the loudest I have heard, but there is some bass in there, and hopefully you could hear that from the microphones. Quick look at gaming. Now I'm charging at the same time, trying to generate as much heat as possible. So the volume is at 100%, the brightness is right up there as well. Let's see how hot it gets and see how it performs. This is Marvel Future Fight. Clash of Clans. Now you may think this is a light title, but when you do get larger towns, it can get a little bit laggy on some systems. This title is Injustice. So after that bit of gaming, let's have a look and see how warm it is getting. So front of the screen is up to almost 38 degrees there. And the rear of it, where it tends to get the warmest, is actually a little less warm there, around 37. So my conclusion, after using this phone now for two weeks, what do I think of the Limax 2? I think it is a phenomenal phone for the price. Sure, it's got some major flaws there. It doesn't have a 3.5mm headphone jack. This particular model only has 32GB of storage. And it's only coming in that rosy gold colour that is not going to be to everyone's liking. Just like the EUI as well. Not everyone's going to like that, but I'm slowly getting used to it. And you can always jump on XDA forums and download a custom ROM without any bloatware on there. And a slightly tweaked version of it. The build in general is good. Okay, there's a little bit of shaking noise coming from that volume rocker. Uh, the rear fingerprint reader is now working flawlessly after the 16S firmware update. The camera can take a very good photo with plenty of detail and good lighting conditions. Low light it's not that great. And the 4K video, it has a lot of artifacts and a focus issue that hopefully Lee Echo is onto and they're going to fix that. The battery life is okay, it can still make it through a full day. Sure, it doesn't get higher scores like the Samsung Galaxy S7 that can get an hour more on PC Mark, for example, with a similar battery size. And the performance of it is great. That Snapdragon 820 is very fast, can play all of the latest games. 
and with the 2K screen with 515 PPI, it looks great. So all in all, I can recommend this mobile phone. I don't think you're going to find anything better spec-wise than this for 230 US. Thank you so much for watching this review. If you did like it, why not think about subscribing for more reviews just like this one. I'll have plenty more up and coming, and I'll hopefully catch you soon. Bye for now.